So back then you were a photographer or were you painting as well? I was doing both. I started as a painter, but I, I, I'd gotten into photography through a wonderful guy I met who was with an agency in New York and got me turned on. Uh, and I then got into photography and, and did a lot of portraits and documentary things. And uh, finally, uh, Phyllis Academy in Andover uh, asked me to come up as a year to be a photographer in residence there and teach, which I loved. And while I was there, I heard about this guy, Minor White. And I heard how great a teacher he was and a great photographer. So I called him and I said, can you come up and teach a workshop with me? He said, sure. He showed up in his great big old four-wheel drive. And big this four was what year? This is about 1967. And uh, he came up and we had a wonderful day teaching together. But he went down to the car, and as we were getting into the car, he lugging his big 8x10 camera, he looked at me and he says, George, how the hell did you end up teaching photography? You don't know that much about it. I said, it's probably true, Meyer. He says, but you know what? You do everything well that I don't do. You're a great teacher, you love the kids, and you know enough about art to approach it from that way. So come and be a professor with me at, at MIT. Just be a professor. Yep. And I said, well, okay. So uh, I went the next fall to MIT and had a wonderful four years teaching with him there in the architecture department. And I learned a lot there. What, uh, did you, did, at that time, were you living in Nova Scotia? No, no. When we saw this movie? Oh, well, when, when the movie was made, yeah. and when, when I was, yes, we, we lived up there only, only, uh, only, actually, we, we were there year-round, yeah. At that time, you yeah, were? Yeah, we were. Yeah. Did you have the kids there with you, too? Oh, yeah, well, they were born there. Oh, they were born? Yeah. Kids were, so they're half Canadians? They, luckily, they have an exit card if they need it from, from uh, yeah. silly warfare, if, if it happens to be oh, silly. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And they get all their health insurance to take care of them, too. Mm -hmm. Not really. You have to make some options. Are you this or are you that? Oh, I see. So, I see. Yeah, okay. Because I got to. But it's a great system, I think, the Canadian system of health. I mean, they do really take. The only, the only problem is there, the, uh, there aren't enough doctors and it takes right, a long time to get it. Right. But yeah. you think that the, that the system is. It works, okay? I think it's pretty good. But it could be fixed. It could be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that goes. Holds true for most places. They, right? they, they need more doctors like we do. Yeah, yeah they yeah. need more doctors. Yeah, especially right. in the rural areas. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, we are really in a rural area. We are in a, in a harbor. It uh, looks it. I mean, when, when, when after you see the movie, you're just amazed. It, has it changed that much? The yeah, look a, of it? A bit, a bit, but not, not much. Not that much. I, I went up in the lighthouse nearby uh, last, no, oh, 10 years ago. And uh, I looked up the shore, took a look at it, and it really hadn't changed much. There were about five or six houses that were new since I went up there years ago. And uh, it's, I mean, it, it's changed, so, but it still has the feeling there aren't many people. And uh, there are an awful lot of tourists. But that comes But what up. about the kind of style of the character that we saw in the movie? Well, th those, those people those, still exist? Those guys have all died. My one, of one, one, one or two of the kids. But do they uh, act the same way? Or are they the same kind of? Are they I, think, I think they would. I think um, I know people like them that they're 30 years younger. Yeah. And uh, they still love the land. I think they become more realistic in terms of, uh, you know, somehow making it work financially and so forth. But yeah, I mean, there are still farms that operate, not many of them, a few sheep around. Uh, yeah. But uh, it isn't the days that we, the hippies, went up and, and really enjoyed it and latched into it. Oh. Back then, that, that was the kind of what, what drew you to it? What, what drew you to that area? Because well, it was a hippie hangout? Or? No, uh, my, my parents had gone there on their honeymoon in 19, uh, 1930. And they said, wow, it's great and the fishing's great. So I showed up there and, God, I, 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 the hospitality of the Nova Scotians, of rural people generally, is tremendous. And uh, this, this guy looked at me and he, he said, when I appeared and he said, George? I said, yes. He said, where are you going to stay tonight? I said, oh, I don't know. Camp out somewhere. You can camp out. You see that place? You camp out over there, right by the stream. You go get some trout, and I'll see you. So for three days, this guy was wonderful. And, and he uh, let me uh, stay there, and I got sold on that place. And during that time, I went down into this harbor, and I found a, a, a kind of a rooming house or a place I could stay. And I went in there, and 
you know, they were really great. They let us have a great place, and it was very inexpensive. But uh, by the time I left, I was talking to him about maybe buying it from him. I loved it so much, that, that, that area. And my wife is a gardener and, and very much organic and, and uh, involved very, very much in just in, uh, in, in, in nature. So anyway, I, 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 did, uh, I did stay there for a while and what, did talk to this guy and we were, we were he's a Scotchman, so you had to watch him in, in, in uh, bartering, you know, he's a wonderful guy, but, but tight, you know. So anyway, by the end of the year or so, with a lot of correspondence, we decided on a price, and I bought it. And, and uh, it's, it's neat. It's, it's a working farm. We, we, we it's worked the it. same one you've got. Same one. We, for seven years we lived there. We had cattle and sheep and stuff like that. Kind of but I did keep doing photographs. So do you consider yourself to still be a hippie? Uh, no, I really don't. Uh, I mean, some of my values are, but I, I'm... And I, I have to tell you, I... I uh, I had that beard, yeah. and after having it for about five or six years, I looked at myself one day in the mirror, and I said, George, Abraham Lincoln, no, you, you're not that. Uh, so I went downstairs, stood in a doorway, behind one edge of the doorway, and, and I, or she, she saw my whole face. But I had shaved off this whole side, the rest of the beard over, and I, uh, I, sh in, in, I, I just I stood in such a way that she could see my old face, and she just talked to me. Then I went over to the other side of the door, and all she saw was skin. And she said, "She said, oh, that's horrible. What am I going to do?" You know, stuff like. But she got used to it. She didn't want. She wanted the beard back. You no, know, I, I think thinking about it, she she really didn't. But she did, that was the need that she knew. Ever since I'd been dating her, and going with her. You never grew it back. Uh, not intentionally. I've had some. I've had some you know, shadows, sure. but but I get. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. No, 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 no. I, I have about as much hair on top as you do. Yeah. I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you still look great, George. Well, and we're we're pleased that uh, you're still around and on Nantucket. Well, Thanks for sharing this. This is a great place to be.